we need to be able to calculate every single player move, uh, player and ball movement for every beauty frame. And here is where, a, where AI technology shines. Through our, uh, please play the second video, yes. Through our optical tracking system, we can show all players' ball movements, draw some dynamic graphics to spotlight the single player, and show data on the, on the, video, play, uh, on the video player at the same time. Like, like here, you can see, his running distance and current speed, and connect players through a line and show the distances between them. Besides these visual, visual interactions, we are not only calculating players' physical data without any extra wearable devices, but also at the same time, starting to discover more essential stats and data, such as how much defenders are well aligned throughout the game, how compact they are between midfielders and defenders, or how much press we are putting and where we are pressing the most. All these concepts have been quite familiar for any football experts, but it hasn't been concretely measured yet. So now a number of early adapters are beginning to take a deep dive into those stats with the optical tracking data. However, since only a few companies have both panoramic video capability and tracking capability, so they, these are not commonly used yet. During more than 20 years, uh, I had the feeling that I just watched the matches, didn't analyze the match. Uh, with Bipro, this concept changed because as, as Luis explained, football is about space and time. So for the first time, I had the possibility to see thing, what happened on the pitch with all the players and with all the relations. Uh, in youth football, I think in the academies, it's so important that we, we don't just look for the physical parameters. We have to look for the fundamentals. This is the most important to develop a player. How is his relation with the ball, technical skills? How is his relation with the teammates? This is what covered be pro. In the week of training, um, we can see all clips and see all data uh, of the training and even of the opponents. So for analyzing uh, opponents, we can see everything, uh, the strengths and the weaknesses, um, how they play, where they play, how many passes they had uh, over the whole season or uh, in several matches. So uh, in pre-match, uh, on pre-match, in the week before the match, it's, it helps us a lot. Uh, on the match day uh, itself, um, it's easy to, to send uh, the clips live to the coaches who maybe have an iPad uh, uh, on the field. In the post-match, uh, I think, uh, so a day after the match, it's, it helps us uh, the most because we can uh, exactly compare the data, the event data of the match uh, of players uh, to the films and the clips uh who are the same i use b pro it's one year it's uh, it's clear it's smart and uh, it help us uh, during our mission to grow up goalkeepers from the youth sector to the first team to Serie A. it's uh, it's incredible for me because i always uh, uh, have videos with my camera and uh, now i can have a panoramic view i can watch what, uh, what the, the goalkeeper does during the game. Also, when the ball is in the other area, the, par the participation of the goalkeeper at the game, it's uh, very, very important for us. If we divide things a little bit between social and OTT, um, basically when I took on this job, I wanted us to be very fan Fantastic in our social approach and that's fan dash tastic really talking to the fans serving them the, the 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 content that they really wanted and this fantastic approach i mean we've we've tried to keep it during during the pandemic but we've also um understood that there's really been a void that we needed to fill um live games were uh, on pause and people were looking for other content especially so longer form documentary, like the one you mentioned, Ash, um, the Andres Iniesta unexpected hero uh, documentary. So I would say we almost try to speed up some of the, the launches. Um, the Andres Iniesta documentary is one example. Um, we've also been working uh, on the Match Day documentary uh, featuring Barcelona um, last season. Um, and yeah, just in general, trying to really speed up some some launches to really fill that void for uh, 
for fans. In La Liga, we see ourselves as a sports and entertainment company and, and we are a, a content house that goes beyond match day or, or what happens uh, just on the field of play. So, so that, that helped for sure. Um, some of our existing content uh, has become even more engaging uh, during this period. So, for example, the likes of uh, uh, clips showing on, on how the players uh, keep themselves uh, fit, you know, during the the, the, the pandemic or, or vintage uh, content from, from the clubs. So, so all this has been very well received. In, in the beginning, our main focus was uh, definitely um, uh, to show our commitment uh, with the fight uh, against the, the COVID-19, especially with the you know with the dramatic situation that, that we have in, in Spain uh, as compared to some some other countries, perhaps. So 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 that was you know like a, a, our our main focus in the beginning, and then after that we were also able to provide um, content around uh, the, the protocols. Uh, for, for the return to, to training and to the competition and all the different uh, initiatives around you know, the, the resume of the competition and the different things that uh, our clubs you know have, have been doing you know during during this period uh, both Bayern and Dortmund immediately announced the um, uh, that they would be embarking on a virtual Asian tour uh, this summer um, obviously um, uh, for example, Borussia Dortmund actually planned to actually have a physical one and because of the, um, the current situation, they are not able to do so. So um, what they have done is taking a, a, a creative approach, uh, taking uh, their learnings, um, both Bayern and Dortmund, uh, to take um, using digital to create a, a virtual stops and creating ways to engage um, through um, live sessions um, uh, with their, their players, their legends, um, uh, unveiling new jerseys, uh, amongst others. So, uh, virtual uh, fan meetups. You know, if people get aware, like uh, like players, if you talk to them, they're immediately male players. I mean, usually they're super supportive and and help and open doors. Um, if you talk to people, you know, in society, they're open to women's sports. If you talk to uh, people now in the economy, you know, they they see the benefits and and it's just developing everywhere. But we need to bring the message there. And where we still struggle is actually in the places where changes could may be made immediately. And that's the sports organizations. And these organizations quite often, in my opinion, do a bit more talking than actually doing. And, and uh, you know, they could really reinforce the case of women's sports so, so much quicker and put the right structures in place. We have to also understand that the way that the, also there are some media that communicate is like, it's wrong. We have to stop comparing women's football and men's football. It's, women's football is a beautiful product and we have to communicate it. We have to tell the story differently. And this is what the media, is, like most of the media channels are doing this mistake by comparing women's football and football. And that's why we are getting hurt in terms of like sponsorship deals in so many ways and also getting fans. If we looked at the, at the awards of the best of FIFA, where um, Messi won the best for the male uh, player and uh, Rapi Megan Rapinoe uh, for the women player. And then you looked at, at their speeches um, and, and without needing to compare them, you see how different they were. So um, Rapinoe was really giving a, a, a political stand uh, mm. where, where Messi was not well, where he was giving more a personal um, um, speech let's say and that is maybe connected to everything that i was saying regarding the education but also connected to what is needed because of course men do not need uh to preach uh, a lot because they already have a certain status in general um at least in a in a high level in football where whereas for women players uh, they really need to push the change in order to get where they, they want to get. What you mentioned that, that women are, the players always feel like they're the ones that are advocating the most for the sport. They're the ones that are posting on their social media accounts. Hey, come buy tickets, come, um, come to the stadium, come watch our games, come support our sport. And I think that's where the, the hub of storytelling really needs to be. And so when you look at the growth of the sport, which I also agree with Tatiana, it's the biggest growth opportunity in sports now is, is women's sports and specifically in women's in football. 
that at the hub of that and at the heart of that is is the players and that's where brands have a really big opportunity because they play such an important role i mean look visa sponsoring all of the panels on the women's football parts of the of the wfs um they play a very important role in elevating the value of female athletes and therefore the the sports uh, uh female sports and i think um yeah i think the players kind of always sit at the hub of that we have to invest on visibility, invest on promotion, invest on organization of big events to try to develop the structures of our clubs to find this, which is our goal, a professionalism of all our players, coaches, referees, etc. etc. And, and last thing, uh, sometimes from the main point of view, we, we show that the investment on women's sport is like a kind of, understand me, it's a kind of charity. No, it's not a charity. It's a strategic mm. pillar of the development, at least in Spain, of, of our sport. Here's no difference between men and women. We want, our goal is to develop our sport. Clubs specifically have to do is balance the amount of information that's available to them and really, fo really focus on what of that information is going to drive and build out that fan experience and nurture and develop the relationship with the fan because you can go down a lot of a lot of rabbit holes chasing a lot of data that won't deliver much value back to either the club or, or to the relationship with that endpoint fan we are working currently uh, uh, in our, all our sponsorship deals trying to get uh, more information from uh, the sponsor uh, uh, in in addition to what we get in terms of uh, of uh, money we want to get data at the end of the day sponsors comes to la liga to to have a relationship with, with us they are not just looking for putting their brand in in a jersey or in the backdrop they they want to engage with our audiences and they have uh, such a strong or, or relevant information as we could have. We are working with a food delivery company that uh, is sharing with us information about how they how they track uh, customers minute by minute. Having that information to us as a league is really really important in terms of uh, uh, crossing uh, uh, both data sources and and try to to find uh, um, synergies between the, the two the two ways of business. In my Kujo, given the verticals we explore, uh, which are less premium contents uh, in most cases, we really are leveraging uh, our content and giving it back to the commercial partners as well so they can create relevant content to their consumers. And then we can learn as well, as Mick was just explaining. So learn as well from the commercial partners what type of content their consumers are actually requiring. Uh, and this has been quite successful with us. It really needs to go both ways. It, needs, it cannot be only from the commercial partners that we need to leverage this data and leverage the opportunities. but content rights holders, clubs, leagues and federations need to as well give content back to the partners so then you can understand as well uh, what happens on their side. Over the past couple of months, it's been, it's been fascinating to see the ways in which clubs, governing bodies, um, streaming services have adapted um, to understand what best content is to serve to the fans at this period, uh, both before we had football back in any form, um, when there was a complete suspension, and, and of course since football has returned. So we've seen you know, a heavy focus on nostalgia, um, a heavy focus, uh, a sort of predictable turn in, in the short term immediately to archive content um, and, and trying to recreate the focal point of a week um, for, for fans who had been deprived of a focal point. Desde de este lado, ahora que recién empiezo, trato de inculcarles eso, la formación, la preparación para, para que el impacto el día de, de dejar los botines sea... Eh, eh, lo menos suficiente doloroso posible, ¿no? la verdad que, que es un impacto muy brusco eh, y hay que estar preparado, hay que estar preparado mentalmente y bueno, si, si, si nos podemos formar y si podemos estudiar una carrera dentro de, de nuestra profesión, que tenemos los recursos y tenemos mucho tiempo, sería, sería lo ideal. ¿no? El fútbol en sí lo utilizamos como un vehículo y eh, Utilizamos el fútbol para que los chicos puedan, puedan terminar su, sus estudios. Eh, recibimos, obviamente, chicos de, 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 todo, de todos lugares, eh, chicos con muchas carencias, muchos de ellos, eh, y que salgan de acá con un estudio terminado, con un estudio secundario, que es lo mínimo para poder trabajar el día de mañana, ya es algo 
importantísimo. Vienen acá sin nada, llegan sin nada, irse con algo es importante. Eh, y ese me parece que es el trabajo que tiene que hacer el club y la necesidad y también el derecho que tienen los chicos con respecto a, al estudio. Eh, vos calculá que posiblemente pasen más de 10 años eh, atrás de un sueño y si ese sueño se le trunca o, o no llega, eh, bueno, decir, el club me dio la posibilidad al menos de terminar mis estudios e irme con algo y que la, la familia lo reciba con eso y posiblemente a la vuelta los volvamos a encontrar desde otro lugar. Eh, si llegan a jugar mucho mejor y si no llegan a jugar, obviamente insertarse y tener la posibilidad de seguir con su vida. Ese sentimiento de, de incertidumbre, de, de no tener las cosas claras cuando te has pasado toda la vida sabiendo que en un mes empieza la pretemporada, que en dos meses empieza la temporada, que se acaba en mayo y como que todo te lo han regido a través de este de este calendario y ahora quedas expuesto al mundo y no sabes por dónde empezar, cómo empezar. Creo que sí es un sentimiento, como te digo, que, que cada vez que se acerca ese momento se va haciendo más fuerte y más latente. La verdad es que a nivel personal, eh, el haber comenzado con el movimiento como un gol, eh, me genera una satisfacción más allá de ser jugador de fútbol, de un significado mayor a lo que significa practicar este deporte, eh, ganar títulos, marcar goles. Ronaldo sabe mucho de, de ganar títulos, de marcar goles y demás, pero creo que coincidiremos en la sensación de que el fútbol se ha convertido en mucho más que un simple deporte. Se ha convertido en una vía de escape para muchas personas en, en el mundo y a nivel personal, pues cuando comenzamos con este movimiento, consideré también que era importante visitar las organizaciones con las que estamos colaborando y viajé a la India, viajé a Colombia y vi realmente la capacidad y el cambio que está haciendo el fútbol en, en este tipo de países en los que niños y niñas pues no tienen eh, los derechos de poder tener una educación necesaria, de tener las, las eh, necesidades básicas satisfechas y a nivel personal sí que me genera un significado mucho mayor que simplemente ser un jugador de fútbol. Hay una serie de factores que están influyendo a que lo que digan los jugadores de fútbol o los deportistas en general tiene mucha repercusión. Eh, las redes sociales se han convertido en una herramienta eh, muy importante y muy visible en, en los deportistas profesionales y en los futbolistas profesionales. Y es verdad que creo que, que los jugadores jóvenes, como estamos viendo en Common Goal, eh, los que hay muchos jugadores jóvenes que se están uniendo al movimiento, se dan cuenta de que, de que, bueno, de que cuando eres jugador de fútbol tienes una plataforma, eh, cuando comunicas tus valores o tus opiniones la gente escucha y, y yo creo que muchos están tratando de utilizar esa capacidad de llegar a tanta gente de la mejor manera posible, ya sea tratando de luchar por causas justas o tratando de comunicar sus valores, pero me parece que es algo que, que sí que llevamos ahora mismo en nato en, en ser deportistas profesionales en esta época y que todavía con el paso de los años pues todavía eh, jugadores y jugadoras se concienciarán aún más de la capacidad de opinión que tenemos y sobre todo de la capacidad de llegar a las personas, que el deporte en general y el fútbol en particular Creo que no tiene comparación. Está en mi esencia, en mi carácter, en mis valores, eh, ayudar a los que más necesitan. Entonces, eh, Fundación Fenómeno nació exactamente por eso. Vamos a sufrir bastante este impacto, ¿no? Porque las empresas, las que están sufriendo demasiado ahora mismo, que son las empresas comprometidas con, el, con el tercer sector, ¿no? Con las organizaciones eh, no, no gubernamentales, eh, en cuanto surge una crisis, pues lo que los primeros que quitan es eh, las donaciones, ¿no? Las donaciones, eh, wow. la publicidad, pues también se baja bastante, pero lo que tenemos que hacer es buscar soluciones, buscar maneras de, que, de, de ofrecer nuevos proyectos. Eh, nosotros con la Fundación Fenómenos hemos hecho canales y plataformas para buscar, eh, identificar dónde están sufriendo más la gente en Brasil y de este modo ofrecer algo de asistencia. ¿no?